Iran, we're live with ThinkTech here on a given Tuesday afternoon at the 3 p.m. slot. Um, and we're doing ThinkTech talks with Ed Teixeira of Shamanad University. We're going to talk about Cybiz at Shamanad. If you recall, Ed Teixeira was the chief of civil defense here for a long time. He's associated with that. He looks like that. He feels like that. But now he's at Shamanad. All those years of education he brings with him. And wow, what a, what a great result. So, Ed, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jay. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm happy to be here. We want to talk specifically with you about a program that uh, you're putting together at Shamanad called Cybiz. This is very interesting to us because, you know, there's a bunch of things happening in cyber, cyber crime, and that's what it's about, uh, both on the surveillance side by the U.S. government, by the, on the Chinese side by all the hacking, and by hacking in general around the, around the world. I mean, we know, for example, there are tons of hackers in Russia and Eastern Europe who make a living out of, out of attacking American, uh, American Internet. So um, this is a program that deals with all sides of that, and it's, it's much more than just uh, your regular forensic offerings at Shamanad, because you're actually going, to some extent, global on this program. Tell us about the program. Sure, if I could take, take a step back, uh, Jay, for a moment, uh, you know, when I left the state government service, Shamanad contacted me and asked me if I would consider helping them in their master's in criminal justice program, a, a program underneath that called the Homeland Security Leadership Development Program. And I said, yeah, you know, I, I had no immediate plans uh, other than catching up on a lot of things that <laughs> I had to park in my 15 years in state, state service at Civil Defense. And so when we got going and we sat down last year uh, with some of the faculty and staff of Shamanad, uh, we kicked around some ideas that Shamanad could move forward into the community and um, not only advertise its great programs, but also do something in the community. And so I said, okay, well, let me think about it because the one thing I wanted to make sure of is we didn't get into government's way because I saw a lot of programs, academia sponsored while I was in state civil defense. And I said, hey, you know, I think we might, you might be confusing the public on your role and responsibility, go be careful. Because some of these institutions got federal grants that allow them, and they still do, get way out there. But nevertheless, uh, the Shamanad staff uh, basically had their eyes set on cybersecurity from the get-go. So after it's a natural extension of the whole forensic program. Isn't it? Absolutely, and you know, cyber affects every one of us that uses a computer or even a held handheld device like an iPhone, even cell phones. So I finally said, "Okay, I got the message. We're going. We're going to cybersecurity." But what I also asked them is for you know, give me some time, along with the help of other technicians and experts to one go after people that really knew about meaning those that have actually had hands-on experience with breaching you know I wanted to go after people from the dark side if you will okay because in government I had the opportunity to work with a lot of specialists that came from other universities through Homeland Security educational consortia and uh, with the FBI, the Secret Service, et cetera, et cetera. So I really wanted to get other people involved and get their manao, so to speak, their skill and their knowledge. So I said, go ahead, Ed. So we worked on inviting some people from, I would say, the dark and gray side. And, we, and they, they were willing to come. And we've got one of them, Mr. Johnny Long. And I kind of jump ahead of myself. Johnny Long is coming all the way from Uganda. He's Johnny a, Long, he's on yeah, your right there. Here. Yeah, Johnny Long. He um, he's, he's a professional hacker. Professional hacker. I wonder what his business card says. Johnny Long, <laughs> professional fact, hacker. His his email, Jay. His email says, "I hack stuff." <laughs> dot. Okay. Yeah. And, and matter of fact, he's he started an organization for hackers to give them something positive to do, and that's called HackersForCharity.org. And you can go to his website, and there it is. You know, so give these guys something to do. But I think, you know, we ought to hear from Johnny himself that particular night. So the night of August the 13th, doors will be open to Mamiya Theater at 4.30 p.m. And we'll start off with some introductions at 5.30. And by the way, your ticket allows you with a little bit of food or refreshment when we take a break after Johnny Long's uh, mm -hmm. uh, presentation. So we're going to let Johnny Long kind of tell you more. But reading about him and, uh, and in contact with him, 
over the past months tells me that uh, I think we've got a God, God fury man who probably said, you know what, I need to take a break from certain uh, lifestyles, took his family to Uganda and started a mission there and is also helping the Ugandan communities. So what, what a guy, what a, what a pleasant man. But he's written 13 books. Um, some of them are bestsellers and is under the uh, special title of No Tech Hacking. So here's a guy no, that No Tech, no tech hacking. hacking who can do hacking technically and just by observing what you and I do, what he would call shoulder surfing, in other words, just looking over our shoulder as we're sitting down in a chair at an airport or something and seeing a screen on a laptop, he can tell a lot about, about us. So here's a guy that can do it by technical means and hacking to and getting paid to hack, okay? And uh, getting into uh, your systems by, by technical means and just by watching our habits and he can make some educated guesses in getting there. If I may, the second speaker that night, August the 13th, at Mamiya Theater, St. Louis and Chaminade Campus, mm -hmm. is um, Kevin Manson. Now, he's I, a lawyer. He's a lawyer, and of all the other people that we had that were ready to come to Hawaii, that were committed to come, um, Kevin Manson, I thought, hey, here's a guy, lives in Georgia, St. Simon's Island, if I got it right, has done a lot of work, on the federal side, even in Congress in his earlier years, uh, has agreed to come. And what I like about Kevin, he spent about nearly 20 years at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center and helped to establish a portal called CyberCop. So I think as we as we targeting the business community, public in general, we have something to offer that Jay, I'm willing to put my last dollar on this table and said, you know what? The likes of who we have not seen yet in Hawaii and maybe never see. Because I've seen a lot of experts come to Hawaii in cybersecurity. Again, from conferences that we've had oh, sure. and exercises that we've had in cyber. But these guys, uh, you know, I'm so pleased that they said yes. I'm still chafing a little bit of one individual and I got to give him some press because he's coming out of Las Vegas and you may see him on TV, but Kevin Mitnick, I think co-authored one of the books with Johnny Long. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Mitnick. He's been out here before. He's spoken out he, he here. He could have. He could have. But he uh, was. On the radio show. I'm pretty sure he was on our HBR radio show I, years ago. I last, uh, so I saw him the last time was on CNN. I think it was, it was on a breach having to do with China mm -hmm. and that he was interviewed by CNN. And he and I talked on the phone uh, a couple of times about getting him out here. And basically, I said, I told him, hey, I saw you on TV. He said, oh, uh, which station? And I said, I think it was CNN. He said, well, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of things. Every time there's a hit, you know, I'm asked to comment on. Kevin is an interesting guy, although that's not the Kevin we're having. We're having Kevin Manson. Kevin Midnight, I got to say, to tell you what, of the quality of people I wanted to get, you know, Kevin, when he was uh, indicted and charged, uh, spent eight years in a correctional facility mm -hmm. for breaching That's into the one. To AT and T. We, we've yeah. had him. We've had him. Yeah. By so, telephone, we had him on an HBR show. Yeah, because uh, yeah. So I, I think he might have. He didn't tell me he was in Hawaii before, but, but anyway, Madison tells me the last time he was in Hawaii was like about 45 years ago on, on a way to Vietnam. But a guy like that is so active in various communities. He can He serves as a consultant to the Department of Homeland Security and Cyber, as well as a consultant to many other law enforcement organizations. So every time I'm, I'm in communications with him, he's somewhere else helping some other community. So when you wrap it up together, we've got two interesting speakers that'll come in that I think are very, very difficult to get. They know their business, and I think in a three-hour time span from 5.30 to about 9 o'clock, Hearing from two different speakers like that will help our businesses, help our institutions, help IT professionals, help IT students, and just anybody that's just interested in how vulnerable we are you know, to breaches of security will get their money's worth. Also, how much way, money? Well, right now we're offering an early bird special that will be extended as of today. It'll be extended to um, August the 5th. And it's sixty dollars, mm -hmm. and after that, the price may jump up to well, about hundred dollars. Yeah, Gee, sixty for a program bucks. like this yeah. with these guys. And folks, we're not out there to make any money. Sure we just wanted to money. do something, you know, <laughs> for the community 
do yeah. something and does and, and present something that we think is very very interesting and is tied to our criminal justice program in, in Chaminade University. Yeah, it really yeah. is. It's perfect. It's perfect for Chaminade. It's perfect for you know the community that wants to know about this question. You know, aside from these what two guys, John uh, Long, Johnny Long, and Kevin Manson, the lawyer. And, and possibly Kevin Mitnick too. No, Mitnick. No, I've. Um, I basically said uh, to Kevin that you know maybe next year. Maybe next it's year. getting kind of yeah, late yeah, already. He, he's and, out there though. And the logistics. Yeah, so. these two guys. Do they constitute the program, or is there more? No, nope, that's the two. Because you know that night we probably just could have used one speaker. Yeah. You know, and my first my first option was let's just use Johnny Long. He's coming a long way. Okay. No pun and intended. No, no, yeah, no <laughs> pun intended. Thank you for that one. He's coming all the way from Uganda um, and going to return to Uganda. And so he's, from, from the distance he has to travel, I thought, hey, you know, let's get a bang for our buck, so to speak. Just put him on for two hours and have a Q&A for the audience. But Kevin, I think, offers a lot. He's tied into a lot of law enforcement organizations in Hawaii already. And matter of fact, he's going to be bringing with him uh, David Yakovetti, who is the current um, special agent in charge of the Secret Service Division here in Honolulu. Oh, wow! Right, right down the road. Is he going to speak or just? Uh, be I here? think I think Kevin wants to introduce him and get and get uh, David to say a few words, if not not a short spiel mm -hmm. that night as well. Oh, that's Because the right. Secret Service has done a lot of work in cyber, cyber yes, crime. Yes, yeah. yes. And so it's it's a bang for your buck. And so the second hour would be Kevin's. And the third hour is a Q&A for the general audience, including students that are there. So they can stand up stand and ask up questions. With a microphone and say, hey, you know, what about this? What do you know about that? What can I do about this? The two of them are going to be And two answered. gentlemen right there. So you have one speaker, the other speaker, then the Q&A mm -hmm. for both speakers. That's correct, yeah. Oh, that'll be very interesting. Yeah. And after Johnny Long, we'll take about a 30-minute break, get people to network, put them on outside, give them a little refreshment, get them back in for Kevin's presentation about 7.15. Can you give me a, the flavor of what, what they're going to cover? I mean, cybercrime, it's, uh, it's subject to some definitional discussion. Uh, what is cybercrime? What is cybercrime for this program? Well, cybercrime, I think the best way and most simplest way to define it is any auth unauthorized attempt to break into your security systems that are being provided by computers and all of that. Unauthorized access can constitute cyber crime because the unauthorized access for one is, you know, is you breaking the law by going into your trespassing and tied to that is people therefore doing things to your computer system or your information, stealing records, stealing data. Stealing money. Stealing money. <laughs> identity theft is grouped under this particular category. Yeah, sure, sure. All the above. You know, at Shamanon, for example, on their email system, it almost seems like at, at least twice a month from their security uh, office, there is another alert to the f staff and faculty and student body about another phishing attempt. So either one of these gentlemen can talk about um, how vulnerable we are, but I think I, I, I hope to slip that part, the law enforcement part, to Kevin Manson and have Johnny Long just kind of concentrate uh, his theme of no tech hacking and tech hacking. Um, and he's going to update some presentations, you know, that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. So he'll come in loaded, and I think, I think people will find him very, very entertaining. Both gentlemen, by the way, Jay, uh, appear, appear at the large hacking conventions in Las Vegas. We're in San Diego. Like uh, Black Hat, what a perfect place, yeah. Las Vegas for a hacking. I love yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> and and I'm I'm told by people that have gone to it that tens of thousands show up. It's a little scary. Really, tens of thousands. You don't know how many of them on the right side and how many on the left. That's side. true. <laughs> and, and I heard they get away of sniffing out federal representatives and law <laughs> yeah, enforcement really. out of that. You know, so Johnny Long has been uh, a well-known presenter at these conferences and co or conventions, and so has Kevin. We're going to take a short break. Uh, that's Ed Teixeira, formerly of civil defense, which, can, which, which bodes well for his uh, career, second career at Chaminade. 
Um, and we're talking about CyBiz at Chaminade, which is a program about mitigating cybercrime on August 13th, which is you know two weeks away, at the Mamiya Theater in Chaminade. It's from 8.30 to 9.30. Doors open 4.30. Make that 5.30 to 9.30. Doors open at 4.30, which is good to get to meet people. Yeah. And it'll be a great program, and um, um, we're going to be there. I think Tech will be there, Ed. Thank you, Jenny. Anyway, we'll take this break. We'll be right back after this break. Stay there. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're at ThinkTech here on a given Tuesday at 3. Uh, we're talking with Ed Teixeira of Chaminade. We're talking about cybers, mitigating cybercrime, which is the program that uh, Chaminade is putting on on August 13th, only two weeks away, at the Mamiya Theater, 5.30 to 9.30 p.m. Uh, come on down. If you, if you sign up now, it's cheap. So it may be cheap later, too, but it's really cheap now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Ed is very excited about this. This is a great, a great thing for the community that uh, that Chaminade is putting on, that Ed's putting on. But I wanted to cap, you know, I wanted to recap something you mentioned earlier, namely the, the the distinction between the different kinds of hacking. So there's a straight tech hacking, which I guess is the part that grabs the public's attention. You know, I think that's very high tech. Then there's the other kind, which is you called it uh, sh shoulder, shoulder surfing, shoulder surfing over-the-shoulder kind of hacking where you watch somebody and then you sort of pick up on what he's doing and then you, you learn, maybe you watch his password, you entering the password, who knows what, um, and then you go home and do that. And the third part is the part that I remember from, just coming back to me, from the radio show we did, Long Distance uh, Telephone, with Kevin Mitnick. Uh, probably be, Kevin was just out of jail at the time. He's a hacker par excellence, and um, he was... He was um, um, long distance for a reason. I think. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we, you know, I remember he talked about two things that come to my recollection. One is how he uh, used what he called social engineering to get into a company. He'd call some receptionist, get a little information about who was there, look him up on the web maybe, and then he'd parlay that information into more, more calls to more people in the company, always gathering information. And finally, he'd get to somebody where he had enough information he could. Imperson impersonate 
a senior official in the company, and then he would say, well, you know, I can't remember my password, can you give my password? And they did. He was so smooth. The guy's a genius. You know? And he got the password, and then he hacked on that basis. That's, that's neither the, uh, the, the shoulder, what do you call it, shoulder? Shoulder, the shoulder surfing. Shoulder surfing, yeah. or the straight tech, that's the social engineering kind. So, yeah. And I understand that, uh, that Johnny Long can do all those things, and so, you know, through Johnny Long, we can, we can see the magic of social engineering and shoulder surfing and tech engineering. And you've got you to understand this stuff so you're not a victim yourself. Yeah. The one story that uh, Kevin Mitnick told, which I'll never, never ever forget, is he would, he would go up to somebody's house. He, he had some, some kind of email type engagement with the, with the, with the, with the victim, the mark, as it were. <laughs> And he would, he would uh, say, we're going to give you a free gizmo, and it's going to speed up your computer. And he would deliver it you know, with, in, a, in a uniform, a phony uniform, from UPS early in the morning. And he would knock on the door, and he'd give him this box, and the guy would and tell him all you got to do was install this in your computer. And he would install it like a real thing, and he, he would install it. And then what happened is that, that, that gizmo you know, sent all the information on that computer, everything that the victim ever did, it would send it directly to Kevin and he could do all kinds of stuff. Get into bank accounts, just wreck the guy's life, you know. And and, and the, the weakness of it was, I was gonna tell you the weakness. The weakness of it was is that there was no UPS truck. He didn't have a UPS truck. <laughs> <laughs> he would he would park his car down the block. And, and, and appear in this short pants UPS outfit. Oh my but goodness. But somebody spotted him. <laughs> Where's the truck? You don't have a UPS man without a truck. <laughs> and anyway, that was, that was a problem for Kevin. Uh, so uh, this is a kind of thing. I mean, I think these stories are fascinating because they always involve being fooled. That's right. It's a con game. And it's, a, it's really a great challenge not only for the hacker, but for the people who are trying to chase the hacker, too. <laughs> you, you know, I gotta I got add a postscript to that because Kevin Mitnick, not Manson, co-authored a book with Johnny Long. So that's one of the 13 books that Johnny has produced. And, um, and I think even in his first book, uh, No Tech Hacking, it's a guide to social engineering, Johnny goes into how not only shoulder surfing, and when I learned about his skill in looking at ID cards, my back straightened up because we used ID cards as, you know, particularly after the post 9-11 era. We were all about, hey, security, watch out, breaches of security, somebody's watching us, what you put on the internet. I mean, I, I tried not to get my, my, even my own mug on the state civil defense website because we were so conscious somebody of somebody would copy that somebody yeah. copying in sure it's still or, possible. or somebody looking to for a target or a mark yeah. you know to take me out or somebody else out yeah. things like that so we we're all conscious about security personal security and all of that but the one thing we carried around all the time was id cards and sometimes i would forget that my id card was you know on my shirt collar and i'd find myself driving or somewhere else right and then I would take it off, put it in my pocket. Well, Johnny Law goes into how easy it is for him to spot people coming out of buildings, carrying their ID cards on them, and so easy to copy that, you know, go to Google or Google Images, copy a company's logo, make your own ID card for something under $1, for example, or three bucks, you know. So he goes into a lot of those examples, but my back straightened up when I saw that. I said, oh my God, you know, my God, look at all the things that, how many people have come into that were agents or enforcement officers all carrying ID cards. Go to the airport, for example, okay? <laughs> Whatever. To get in as an airport employee, you gotta swipe in and you've got that AOA badge, for example. So I've, I've reached out to also my federal agency um, contacts and tell them, you know what, don't miss this opportunity. We have structured this for the business community and we've contacted a lot of organizations out there in Hawaii's business world to share that particular expertise, but what they really have to say is for everybody. And by the way, the reason I, I asked Shamana to consider businesses, because while in my last job at State Civil Defense, we were in touch with many, many organizations in the private sector. That was part of, that was a pillar of your 
strategic management sure, plans, you sure, know, the, sure. the critical infrastructures we call it, your Hawaiian Electrics, your Tesoros, your Chevrons, all those right. well, companies. All the contingency plans are right there. The water right. supply, all that yeah, kind of yeah. thing that you got to do for, you know, work for anti-terrorism, homeland security, all had to be connected um, with all levels of government, all that. So it was, it was just an ordinary way of doing business. But I wanted to do more. And many of the community representatives, including our own chambers of commerce, would come up to us over the years and say, you know, how do we partner with Homeland Security? You know, that's a big buzzword now. As of 2003, we did about nine Homeland Security summits in Waikiki, eight in Waikiki and one on the neighbor islands. Um, so this is civil defense stuff. This is civil defense stuff. And how, how, do, we, how do we do that? Yeah. And so we always wanted to do more with our business community. But in my, my judgment, Jay, I never really got to third base. Maybe first, Why? maybe a double. Um, I think because our, our consciousness was so much on the responsibility of government to protect, and uh, we were doing all we could for our response agencies out there. And uh, so as the businesses did try to pile on, as we did these particular summits, for example, we, we asked for sponsorship, we asked for exhibitors. We got a lot from the defense industrial base. But the small businesses, yes. yeah. you know, and- They don't have time. They don't have time, yeah. or, or the cost is too prohibitive, you know, yeah. and things like that. So I, I asked Shamana to really, let's, let's try to put this particular forum with the, the major audience, our business communities in Hawaii, and not just in Honolulu, you know, in Hawaii. So that's why the criminal department Criminal Justice Department director came up with the term "psi biz," but it's really open for everybody, businesses. Well, I like the government. idea about biz. It should yeah. reach out to biz, and, yeah. and uh, I, I'm sure these speakers, uh, Johnny Long and Kevin Manson, are going to talk to biz because uh, those are the operating guys. Those are the guys who you know who's who are the backbone of the economy and so forth. But you know, let's take a moment and talk about. Shamanad for a minute. Sure. Let's talk about your, you know, your entry into Shamanad, what you bring to them, what you're doing for them now, and let's talk about the uh, the whole forensic and criminal program there, criminal justice, I guess it is, because um, people know, but I think at a at a fairly vague level, what's going on at Shamanad. Maybe we could drill down and tell them. Yeah, sure. Um, I've I've been with the uh, masses of uh, criminal masses of science, criminal justice administration, so I work hand in glove with Mr. Ron Becker. Uh, Ron was a former judge and law enforcement officer out of Texas, and I think about seven or eight years ago, uh, he came to Chaminade. Ron has written, and I, and I stumbled into this information, uh, Ron has written, I think, five books now on forensics. And his specialty was, guy out of Texas is a, is a diver, underwater diver. And uh, he, he told me about an incident that happened in Texas some years ago where uh, the Texas law enforcement was directed by their governor to find, uh, apparently a school bus had uh, crashed into a pond and the pond was very deep. And, uh, and so the governor and, and, and people wanted to get that bus pulled out and recover, do a recovery job. So, Ron was asked by a friend of his in law enforcement to help him out, so they did. And they basically started from scratch, as Ron tells me, and basically they uncovered the bus and remains, et cetera. But that particular experience and others um, made him think about what they did because there was no written guide to go to. And he basically produced four books about underwater forensics. Uh, he does a class once a year uh, limits it to maybe about 20 students. They come from all over the world. They come on in. And he does some pool training with Here, them. In, in, yeah, in Hawaii, in Chaminade. So it's a he, perfect place, he, isn't it? Yeah. Diving is right so out he, there. So he know. gives them some classroom work. He takes them down to a pool. I think you've got to be licensed in you know, underwater uh, uh, techniques and so forth. And then he runs them through uh, some pool drills. And then you finish off, I think, the, the last few days in class with a natural practical exercise under very, I think, safe and close supervision out at Waikiki or Ala Moana, where they have to, the students have to actually go and underwater and do a forensic investigation underwater on what you'd find in case there was an incident of some fatality, whatever the case may be. And you think about it, how many 
accidents, how many crimes that we know of that were perpetuated in water conditions, absolutely, rivers, streams, absolutely. oceans. Absolutely, it's very hard to investigate, very hard to solve, and with some expertise, you could go a long way. I've been exactly. involved in some of those investigations. I was in the Coast Guard, ah. and um, I think it'd be very valuable to have a, a you know somebody skilled in in underwater investigation. So, of all the programs at Chamada, it's criminal justice ranks up there as one of the most popular. Um, I've uh, I've taught the introduction to homeland security and uh, given an opportunity to teach more homeland security security courses like critical infrastructure, um, asymmetric threat um, courses, and all that. But with working on this project, uh, teaching one course, I've given that, given this course by the way face to face. I'm doing it now on Monday nights from about uh, 5:30 to. Is this open to the public or just the students? Uh, students, you know, people have asked me if they can audit. Uh, I haven't checked that out, but it's open to the students. There, you got to got to register for it, and um, and then I'm also teaching an uh, undergraduate course for Shamanad in, in criminal justice. But there's much more. It's a very very strong program. I'm a, I'm just uh, amazed how popular it is with the number of students in the master's program and the bachelor's program for There's that. There's much more for us, too. We're going to take a short break, okay. and then we're going to come back and do much more with Ed Teixeira of Chaminade, formerly the Civil Defense Director. We'll be right back after this break. <laughs> We're back. We're live. We're at Think Tech here on a given Tuesday afternoon at the 3 to 4 block. We're talking to uh, Ed Tech Shera, formerly Civil Defense Director, now um, a, uh, I guess a forensic teacher and program organizer and many other things at Chaminade University. And uh, we are delighted to have him on the show. Uh, his, primary, his primary message today is, uh, why don't we all go to CYBIZ, that's C-Y, capital B-I-Z, which is on August 13th only two weeks away from 5.30 to 9.30 evening program at the Mamiya Theater, and it's not expensive, worthwhile you're looking. And if you want to find out about it, you go to www.shamanad.edu slash cybiz, C-Y-B-I-Z, uh, $60 early bird rate till July 31, but that's extended, yeah. So this is a this is great program, as we have described it, uh, Johnny Long, a hacker, and uh, Kevin Manson, a lawyer on the other side, so the black and the white all together. But uh, we were talking before the break about exactly what goes on in the forensic program, the criminal justice program, in which Ed is involved uh, at Chaminade. And uh, it is so interesting, and it is so relevant, and it is, you know, to me, Chaminade has a, a great idea when it set this thing up in the first place, and it has maintained the faith 
that's, that's an appropriate term for some, I guess, maintain the faith on this program all these years. So it's, it's a wonderful program. It offers these kids a great opportunity and for good careers and interesting careers. Yeah. Not everybody can be on uh, CIS. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, but there's a lot of CIS out there. So can we talk about that sure. in the last, the last part sure. of the show, Ed? Uh, you know, it seems to me that the more sophisticated our society gets, the more dependent we get on, you know, and computers, the more hacking we have, the more cyber surveillance and, you know, constitutional implications we have, the more we need from Shamanad, actually. <laughs> so what do you see happening? Well, if, if we can just start off with the criminal justice program, uh, I'm, I'm teaching a master's course, uh, been averaging about 10 students. Uh, I've, given it, I've given a course online uh, which has been a kind of challenge for me. I'm old school, you know, where you got a lecturer and you're sitting down taking a lot of notes and da -da 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 asking questions. So I'm old school, so I'm more familiar with that. But I've gone into the online area to uh, teaching. I've taught that class online. And in the online, I had students that numbered in my online class, in this one, Introduction to Homeland Security, where I cover soup to nuts uh, from cyber crime going after al-Qaeda, terrorists, you know, all of that, all of those tiers when it comes to terrorism, and finishing all the way off on the other end of the spectrum with disaster management. Uh, in the last online course, I managed to crank in the after-action reports that were available from Hurricane well, Superstorm Sandy and all of that. This so, is perfect for you. Oh, really, I mean, it couldn't, it couldn't have been made better in heaven. It's perfect. Well, you know, but gee, there's two sides of that sword because I got to talk to myself and say, maybe I'm giving too much information. <laughs> I give it like the fire hose, you know, the fire hose treatment yeah, to yeah. students and all of that. But getting back to that online version, like my undergraduate online course, I've got students all the way around the world. It just blows my mind, you know. So the online course, like any online, goes a whole week long. You know, I end the, end the unit at 11.59 p.m. Sunday night, you know, Hawaiian Standard Time. That's the cutoff of that particular unit. Yeah. Get all your work done and discussions, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But I, I've got one student that's uh, in the military, and he is stationed in Kuwait, for example, you know. And so it's not just... Um, the military that's taken advantage with their education programs that are enrolled, but it's got folks that are uh, aspiring to be in the law enforcement communities and are working on their degrees in California, Texas, Maine, et cetera, out there. Uh, I've got one station in Korea, all of us. Such place. a modern yeah. approach, you guys. So when you, when you get done with all of this, yeah. what's the opportunity for you? And as I, as I enter civil defense uh, for the state, as early as 1996, what I began to see was not only emergency management, disaster management, but I began to see with the with the um, the Waco incidents, the the first World Trade Center of 1993, then followed up by the uh, Alpha Murrah building, Oklahoma City bombing of 1995. Then I began to see laws passed, initiatives uh, created by the federal government to get state and local government partners in the middle of things. These, these events and risks and threats define our times, and we must be prepared to respond. And so, so what I saw was this expansion of responsibilities at the federal level, state and local government level, and then what we call now the Homeland Security Enterprise, including the private sector, but also citizens like you and me doing our share. So where does this all go? As I, as I tell students, I said, you know, as I looked at the beginning, and we've run through like a high point, the apex, over the last three or four years, I have seen a handwriting on a wall of a decline in funding for state and local government participation. And the fact that now we're now hit with uh, federal budget reductions, um, what's that? Was where I can't think of right okay, now. Yeah, you know what I'm talking the, about? The, where yeah, the, the Tea Party thing, yeah. Yeah, where the federal, federal the uh, agencies. The ceiling, the debt ceiling, all that stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. exactly right. So the handwriting's on a wall that there'll be less funding for state and local governments. As a matter of fact, I think this last round of federal homeland security grants, of which our state, while I was there, had over $200 million 
of federal taxpayers' money to the state for response purposes, so police to buy uniforms or, you know, your protective gear, et cetera, et cetera, buy radio systems. That's a lot of money. But I, that was the high point. And now it's a decline. So this last year, all states were reduced in their federal homeland security grant programs that going to went down to our local police and fire and so on, reduced by 40%. So what does this all mean? Does that, that make it more dangerous for us? Does it make us more vulnerable? There'll be a little bit more risks to be taken. And I think on the, on the state and local government side, our elected officials have got to find the funding to maintain that level of readiness that started in about 2001. Maintain that level of readiness. Fill in the gap. And that means now that our federal government, under the Department of Homeland Security for one, would probably be asked to take on a bigger share of the burden. So as I'm telling students, when you're looking at opportunity, this is a great opportunity there. You look at TSA. You go to a TSA line, you see a lot of local kids now, you know, apply through USA.gov, got their interviews, and now they're wearing a TSA uniform. It's right? a good job, isn't it? Yeah, good job, very good job. Uh, Secret Service just uh, announced, contacted, made a phone call to me and said, hey, Dave Giacovetti said, hey, Ed, we got approval now to start our internship program. So we want to be talking to you guys at Chaminade about our internship program, right? The FBI is looking for uh, an array of skills from people. Now, FBI is not Homeland Security, folks. That's not Homeland Security. That's the Department of Justice. But even the FBI and all other federal law enforcement agencies, you know, I Do think... Do they ever take, uh, uh, you know, older gentlemen, like like people at this table, um, you know, to, to at Chaminade for these classes and then ultimately these jobs? I don't know about the job part, but the classes for sure. As a matter <laughs> of fact, you know, I thought for years when, when I left the, you know, I retired U.S. Army, and I thought, hey, you know what, uh, how about that Federal Air Marshal, the FAM, you know? Federal Air Marshals, another job, very, very popular. And I'm saying, well, what's the cutoff for age? I don't know, remember what it was. I said, yeah. you know what? They may want some younger guys, but you know what? You can spot the younger guys on an airplane right. with a crew cut. You know? They need guys like you and me to sneak right? on, you know? They need people like you and I to sneak on. candidates. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so, we so, got to go. So that's EdTech. Sarah, it's been a great discussion, Ed. Thank you so much. We will see you on um, August 13th at the Mamiya Theater. Um, mitigating cybercrime at Cybiz and Chaminade. Thank you so much for discussing thank that. Thank you, Jay, and thank you, viewers, for all of your support and aloha. Aloha. Thank aloha. You. We'll be right back with our show at 4 o'clock, which features Mark Shklov and a discussion of the exchange program with China. We'll be right back. It was so pleasant, Jay. <laughs>